Hey, the more successful you are as a woman, it is harder to date. It's harder to date without having to find a stay-at-home dad or <laughs> a man that want to be taken care of. Like, what man you know, and I'm not to say they don't exist, but I don't know too many men like that. Do they they want to get with somebody rich just so they can stay at home and live off their person's money. I don't know no man like that. Not a single man. Welcome to PTG TV. This is your host, Antonio Hicks. So I want to do something a little different today, and it's primarily for y'all on YouTube, so y'all should feel special on this one. But I want to do this reaction video to something I saw that was kind of interesting because it kind of hits home for me. It's, involved, it's an interview between Carla Will Maris and TK Kirkland. So TK Kirkland is, I don't know if you know who he is, he's a stand-up comedian. He um, creates and produces shows that he ended up publishing and put them on um, Tubi and stuff, but he's known to be a comedian. And he's a very controversial comedian on top of it too. But they're having a conversation about relationship, uh, you know, dating. And then one of the things that kind of hit home for me is like being, he has, well, I don't have, I, don't, I have I have one baby mother. But he has um, seven different, well, seven different women or five different women, five different baby mothers. I have one, I was, I, to my, it was my ex, I was married though. You, I don't think he was married to any of them. But anyway, so I want to talk on that. And I know I know a lot of people ask, like, what does it have to do with PTG TV? It's politics, technology, and gaming. Well, if you, if you haven't listened to my, any of my previous episodes, when I talk about politics or anything technology, gaming, I always equate, like, even gaming, I'd say it's not gaming really, like, video gaming all the time. It's about just the game of life itself and about how we navigate through life and how we play the game and do we level up and how are we, are we falling down or we you know we we um you know we lose in a life like a like, hypothetical life like we losing we taking ills in life how do we recover from it that's what i mean by gaming to a degree it's not always about video games and or the technology surrounding video games same with politics politics is not always about you know political stuff as when it comes to elected officials or things of that nature it's just the politics of life so navigating through relationships navigating through like we're dealing with your children at home things of that nature so it's not just isolated to like particular things like this typically when i have certain guests on or I'm inviting certain people on i say well i'm not heavily involved in politics and i was like yeah yeah i mean you are because you're looking at everything you're looking at it from a linear perspective i'm like mine is more broadly based because i think that with any of those topics how you handle them affects your quality of life which is why i like having diverse people onto the show itself to talk about certain issues that I think will be important to the community and having a, a good understanding of. And this topic to me, it kind of, it hits home to me. I, don't, I mean, I don't even call my kids mama baby mother. Cause I mean, I was married to her for eight years. So, um, I don't like the term baby mother, but she's my kid's mom. I'll put it like that. She is my kid's mom. But it, it, it I think it goes to show that not all fathers are, irresponsible they're, they're they not all fathers neglect their children and I, I know a lot of men get the bad rep because i you know i have this conversation with with mine all the time where everything is always blamed upon it's, it's always well you know men can do, do the the bulk of this stuff and i was like well you know a lot of stuff is based on opinion it's not based on actual statistics or numbers and i'm not trying to say that men are are, are, are not guilty of a lot they're guilty of a very lot of things especially when it comes to wars and stuff we are highly guilty of those kind of things but i wouldn't broadly paint like this this flat out keystroke or stroke on on men doing all a, a ton of things especially when it comes to especially when it comes to like black men or and I, and i'm just not even gonna say black men on this topic alone because this affects a lot of fathers out there as well too it's just that a lot of men when they have they know the relationships don't work out they always want to say that the 90 percent or 95 percent is why i hear our men are like terrible they don't you know they don't deal with the kids the right way and or they're um they don't necessarily be around the kids as much and invest time into the kids or money into the kids. So that's why I'm, I'm wanting to have this conversation today. And this is, this is not even going to be on like the podcast podcast. This is like, like I said, strictly for YouTube, which is why I want to highlight this because I thought the conversation was interesting because I really don't like the way, and I haven't listened to any of Carla's previous episodes. This came up, this popped up in one of my feeds and I just want to talk about it. I don't like the way she interviewed this man. Like, I really don't like the way she... And I'm not trying to say T.K. Kirkland is a great guy at all in, in some of the things that he does and how he navigates through life. But kind of like what he says in his interview that, you know, he has to grow from the mistakes that he's made and acknowledge that he's grown from those mistakes and try to help people not to go down the same path that he went down. And the way that she interviewed him, 
I, it kind of rolled me the wrong way. So, I mean, we, let, without further ado, let's, let's just get started on it. And then, you know, we'll just um, pick up the conversation from there. Love mm-hmm. is Blind is a series of date, a dating show on Netflix. Now, here's the scenario. You're like on this fifth date with this person, right? You're getting to know them. You really like them. Um, then you go to their house. And he's like, I'm going to cut you dinner. The guy. This is the man. I'm gonna- so, really, the whole premise of this is, is that she's talking about Love is Blind. It's a series on Netflix. It's about, you know, you're dating somebody for a couple of weeks or four weeks without have actually having to see that person physically. You're just communicating them through messages and or through like uh, the talking on the phone or whatever, but you don't get to physically see their face until like after the fourth week. So if you like the person within a little four week time frame, after that, you can agree to meet up in person. And once you agree to meet up in person, that's when you first, when you first meet them. So that's just the premise of the show itself. So now let's, you know, go on with this. I'm going to cook you dinner and, you know, I'm going to make you steak and potatoes. Probably a little asparagus on the side, a salad, mm-hmm. a little wine. So you walk in, and then she's like, well, let me help you plate everything, because now you're done cooking, so I'll right. help you plate everything so we can sit down. You open up the cabinets, and the man has plates, um, spoons and forks and stuff, mm-hmm. and cups. But it's paper plates, solo cups, and silverware that's plastic. Okay. He does not own dishes. Okay. No dishes. Yes. You're somewhere between 30 and 35. Okay. How do you feel about that? You, I don't think you should judge anyone. Of course you would say that. Yeah. I love that. I don't think- but here's the thing. It's, it's just because somebody has disposable plates and stuff in their house doesn't mean that you should discredit them for not being a worthy enough partner. I mean, even like me in my early career days, I'm starting off in corporate. I've been in corporate for about two years, three years now. I was um I was boxing. No, two years. I was still boxing. So it's like I was I would go to work. I would work from my you know, regular nine to five. And then once I left work, I would go to to the gym for the duration of the day. So I would be at Bally's, if y'all remember Bally's for like two hours. And then from Bally's I would go to my boxing class and I would be there until about almost eight thirty at night till the gym closed down. So then once I finally got home, like my house, my apartment was about 35 minutes from where I worked out at, from the boxing gym. So I would get home like around nine o'clock. So it's like, I, and I did it Monday through Friday. Like I would do that relentless Monday through Friday because I wanted to be a boxer. Of course I'm not, but I wanted to be a boxer. So I'm like, I'm trying to understand. So when I got home, I mean, I'm trying to grab something to go once I get to, so I can eat once I get to the house. I'm not cooking thin, anything up to actually put on any like actual porcelain dishes or whatever. So I'm like, so does that discredit me? Because I mean, I had only I had those things because you know my parents gave them to me when I moved out. Uh, they gave me you know, when I moved to my second apartment. They got me some dishes or whatever. They gave me dishes that they had left over because my parents, my mom's a hoarder, so she had a, a hoarder. She had a whole bunch of dishes that she ended up giving me some of them, and that's what I had in my apartment. But I'm like, still though, I'm working in corporate America. I'm, I mean, I got a good enough job. So if I didn't have those things. I could not have had any dishes at all because Monday through Friday I'm eating out because I'm at the gym. Like I'm, I'm working. And then when I left, like I get, I'm getting to work at like seven 30 in the morning and I'm not leaving work until five o'clock. And then from five o'clock is ballets where it's the gym, regular gym. And then my boxing class. So I'm not seeing home Monday through Friday until like nine o'clock, nine 30 every single day. So I'm like, so if I don't have hard plates in the house and, and silverware, silverware, I'm like, well, how does that discredit me and say that I'm not a decent enough guy to be going out with? Because I'm like, what does that have to do with anything? I'm like, did I have furniture? I absolutely had furniture in my house. I had furniture throughout my whole house. I had a whole bedroom set. I had every, I had everything. I had a full den set. I had dining room tables and everything. So it's like, I had all of those things. But even if I didn't have dishes, why does that even matter? Like, why is that something to judge somebody off of? And I find it interesting that it always comes back to men that have to have all these things. And I don't. I don't understand it because always men get judged so harshly and we, we are picky too when it comes to certain women. I'm not going to discredit that, but I promise you this one thing, there is no man that will tell a woman no, or he going to walk out. He's not interested in her because she don't have like hard dishes in her house or a a full set of glasses or whatever. No man is going to ever tell a woman that, but for her, 
is she sitting here saying that a man got to have all these things? I dated somebody that didn't have furniture in their place. I didn't commit to it because I'm like, you got to take care of yourself first before you get into a serious relationship. But I did date somebody. They didn't have any furniture in their house and they slept on the air mattress. It was wild too. But I'm like, but I told them straight up, I was like, I can't commit to somebody like you because you still got to get your life together. Meaning that you still got to get your place in, 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 in a, a way to where you can have all these things in your house without having to have me there to help take care of you or do any of those things, which I don't mind growing together, but I still think before you get into a serious relationship, men and women, before you get into a serious relationship, you do need to have your life in some form of order. Like there has to be some order in your, in your life, in your house. I'm, but I'm not getting mad at you. Like if, if she had all those things, I'm not going to judge her because she don't have like dishes, dishes. I mean, who, I mean, really who cares about that? I don't probably eat enough a freaking paper plate. Food is food. It's going to get eaten anyway. So, I mean, hey, if it cut back on dishes, yeah, it adds more to waste. But if it cut back on dishes, I mean, whatever. And I'm not saying I'm not lazy. I mean, I, we, I have all that stuff now, but who cares? I'm like, I'm not judging anybody off that. But anyway, you know, back to the story. I should judge anyone. I, I think um, with me, it's everything's based on who raised you. We can all get raised, but at yeah. some point, we're adults. Let's now take accountability for ourselves. We're now adults. Right. So I understand our parents raised us there's one way. There's grown people that don't Never have, grew up. Yeah, but there's grown people who don't have plates. Her father's a millionaire. She comes from a very affluent family. Yes, but here's my next question. Why were her being successful? She's on that show. Because I will say. Right. So that's the other thing, too. It's like she's not going to be bothered with this man. And then she comes from money. So she's judging this man because he doesn't have plates. I mean, I'm sure there was other stuff involved with, but he don't have plates in his house. That's why she doesn't pursue on relationship, which she's going to say. But I'm like, you come from money. Like, the only reason that you're successful the way you are, and I am going to say that in her case, the only reason she's as successful as she is, is because she had her dad invest into her and help her get a business going. Now, not everybody has that luxury. They don't. I mean, I take care of my kids. I mean, I would do the same thing for my kids. But my kids, I will tell you, my kids are privileged. My kids are very much so privileged. And I'm proud of that. They are privileged. But I, but I, one thing I have always taught them is to be humble in how they respond to people because not everybody was blessed the way that they're blessed. So they don't go into situations looking at them from where they're coming from. Because, I mean, even though my kids and their mom and I didn't stay together, I still made sure that they were taken care of. And they had they had anything and everything that they could want and they, they could need, even up to this day and they're in college. So for this millionaire woman to come and date this guy and she's judging him because of plates in his house, like, what does that say about her? Like, for real, like, what does that really say about her and how she's looking at any man in her in their relationship? I mean, that's just... I think we, I think us and how we look at things determines how we see ourselves. So if you're that critical of somebody else, how would you feel if somebody in turn did that, did that very same thing to you? And there's something in your own personal life that you have not dealt with that's causing you issue and you trauma. But I still think how you treat other people is a reflection of what some of the things that's wrong with you personally. Hey, the more successful you are as a woman, it is harder to date. It's harder to date without having to find a stay-at-home dad or <laughs> a man that want to be taken care of. These men nowadays, right. they are sassy. And so she's saying that, but I'm like, what does she mean men are sassy? Because I'm like, I, I mean, what's the same thing about, like, successful men? And I have heard, I'm not going to sit here and say I have not heard it before, but not into the, by the example that she gave with that. So I've heard men don't, a lot of men don't date women that uh, have money, them, they have their own money themselves because they feel as though they can't do anything for that woman. Meaning, and it's almost like a means of control because I don't agree with that. Because I believe me, I have no problem with dating anybody with any kind of money. I don't care. I'm not looking to get their wealth. I don't even care how much money you got. Like, I really don't care how much money you got. Unless, as long as you can take care of yourself, I don't think it should matter what the person has in their bank account. I mean, because it, why should it matter? Only time you should have a discussion when it comes to finances, finances, and when it comes to taking care of household things and making sure you're trying to, you know, save properly for the future and make sure you're not, you're doing, unless you can afford it, not doing some excessive spending because of your, uh, depending upon what kind of job you're working. Like if you know your, your, your partner, your girlfriend and or your, your wife is working in a particular industry and she might be making, you can assume 
that she's making a certain amount of money. But once you get to certain statuses, like you getting up in position, your title is like a director or, you know, a VP or AVP or, you know, a president of a company or you've had your company and you're doing highly successful and you got storefront locations. At that point in time, you know they're doing very well. And it, as long as they can take care of basic essential stuff, it shouldn't matter what the individual have in their account. Because, I mean, nobody should be looking at any means that they have. They can... The only way they can bend, they can they judge a relationship is them being able to actually pay for the other person. And if they can't give that, if they can't take care of that person, then they feel as though they aren't needed in that relationship. I think that's BS. I think when anybody, when two partners come together and they now form one, it should not be this has this much power over this individual down here. Because in most situations like that, if the husband has so much money and he has so much status and the wife is a stay at home mom, what happens when the husband decides that he wants to start sleeping around and run off with his run off with a mistress or just run it, run the streets. Now the stay at home mom has to start her life all over again. Now you get into this whole aspect of alimony. If they got kids, you got child support on top of it too. So I do think in most relationships, like I am not opposed to, I think most women should come into a relationship having a business or working. And I think you should keep those skill sets up because, I mean, I hate to say it, you just never know how relationships or how things are going to turn out. It's, and then when men, when you're talking about men with money, when they're looking for a spouse, I mean, it, it's to say that when they're trying to find somebody, how do they know that a woman's not getting with them for status? Some examples of that. I've met plenty of people. I have not met them personally. Person, I've seen these people. I knew of them. They um uh, did not. They might have been, you know, look scales from weight from one to one to ten. They might have been a five. The guys, guys might have been a five, but they were highly successful. They had great businesses and or they were high up within like corporations or whatnot. But the people they had on their arms was like ten or elevens, and I hate to assume, but I'm going to assume that they didn't get together because of looks, and it definitely wasn't because of personality. I will have to say it's because of income. It could not be the case, but it's always a perception because the guy does not look like that normal chisel, you know, he going to be in GQ magazine type guy. He's like, he like the basic of a basic guy. The ones I know about, they didn't dress the way they didn't, they had no, <laughs> no sense of style about them. They know nothing about like, you know, smell goods, how to smell like with cologne and whatnot. So, but they somehow had this 10 or 11 woman on their shoulder. So, I am going to safely assume, I'm going to safely assume that it's because they had money and it was success. Now, get who you want to get with. If that's who you want to get with, that's the game you're going to play. I'm, I don't, I'm, I'm not opposed to that. You know, secure your future how you want to secure your future. But, you know, make sure that you have backup plans in the event that it don't work out. But for her to sit here and say that, you know, guys getting with a woman that's, got, that's highly successful and then the, don't, nobody wants to be with a, a guy that's going to just want to stay at home. He want to use it for money and stay at home. It's like, huh? Like, what man you know? And I'm not to say they don't exist, but I don't know too many men like that. They just want to be just a, a, a stay at home. Do they get? They want to get with somebody rich just so they can stay at home and live off their person's money. I don't know no man like that. Not a single man. Every guy that I know, even if they're not making the uh they're not making six figures every guy that i know is working doing something and they have not i have not met a single man has ever said they want to get with somebody outside of being joking they want to get with somebody just so they can stay at home and be a stay-at-home dad they ain't let the woman go to work and live off that woman's income so i don't know where the hell she getting that from that's some bs to me and it's like i always say men always get the short end of the stick like it's always men get the short end of the stick with everything like every and whenever something come out it's always what the men had to have done or something even in my case in my relationship not working it was it was always i'm sure it's always looked at well what did i do wrong and not t- and that from that i didn't do anything wrong i didn't do anything wrong but i get that's the per- it, and it's like, again, men can't do anything right because it's going to always be assumed that the guy, no matter what the case is, did something to cause this woman to react the way that she did, hurt him, harm him, leave him. It's always the guy did something to make her do that. I have kids. I, I have kids. From, and if I had to do it all over again, I don't think I have any children. Right. I love my kids. I tell people now, even though you love your children, if you're not with the father or the mom, a child is a bookmark. It reminds you of the f-ing mistake you made that night or nights for the rest of your life. Yeah. 
Disagree with that. Disagree with that 100%. Because even though it's a mistake, I don't think you looking at that child is going to be a reminder. It should not be a reminder to you, which is why I said people should, all people, everybody should not have kids. It should not be a reminder to you that you said you made a mistake. That's why I'm, I always say no matter who you're sleeping with, you should always expect the worst of the worst. If it happens, it happens that you want to be there to take care of this kid. If you're not using condoms, and if you're not using condoms nowadays, I mean, I've been there before too. If you're not using condoms nowadays, I don't know what the hell you're doing in these streets. But, um, yeah, I don't think that, it, I, I think if you're going into a relationship or you're sleeping with somebody, if, you, if you're doing a sneaky link, I don't care what it is. You should be ready. If something, if something comes out of that and the woman ends up getting pregnant from, a, from the man's standpoint, the man should be there ready to take care of that kid. Whether he wanted it or not, he should be there ready to take care of that kid. And then when that kid gets here, he should not look at that kid as a disappointment to himself to be like him remind him of a potential oops that he had in his life. It's his son. It's his, his son or daughter now. He got to take care of him. I mean, at the end of the day, he got to take care of him, and he should love to take care of him because that's his seed, and that's that's who that's who he helped to bring into this world. Whether him and the mother have a relationship or not, like that, he should be there for to take care of his child. So I don't think you should look at any child as a problem or a burden to something that you have done. The child is here. The child should not have get any of that energy. The only energy the child should only know about is love. That's why I say not everybody, again, should not have a kid. You have seven. Yes. I can understand one being an oops. Yes. I was 17 when I got pregnant with my daughter. Yes. 18 when I mm-hmm. had her. I will say that was like, fucked up. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Never happened again. Yes. Why? Because once you know better, you do better. So you're trying to tell me that you know better, but you have a child that's 37. You also have mm-hmm. one that's 16. Yes. That is like 19 years difference. Yes. And for 19 years, you were still fucking up. Yeah. You were still, you're giving out this advice that you yes. don't even take yourself. But you can't teach nobody nothing. You ain't been through nothing. Right. And, and that's what I say that all the time too. It's like, you know, I don't want to get any advice from anybody that has not been through any hardships themselves. Like, if you come from a life of luxury, like this lady that she was talking about in this example, this lady can't give me any life lessons. And I mean it wholeheartedly. I'm sorry. You can't teach me anything if you don't know what it means to struggle. You can't teach me anything if you don't know what it means to go through hardships on the job. You can't teach me anything if you don't know what discrimination is about. You can't teach me anything if you have not had to deal with problems in workplace environment, in personal relationships, any of those things. If you have not been through any of those things, your advice might be genuine. It might be very helpful, but I don't know how much I'm going to be able to receive from you because if you don't know what that pain feels like, it's hard for you really to, to give me any advice on how to improve from the situation. Like you can't tell me about raising kids if you've never raised a kid a day in your life. You don't know what this struggle is like. I, and I believe that 100%. You can't tell me anything about how to raise a kid if you never raised a kid. It's just your opinion. It's your opinion. But your opinion is not backed up on anything that you've experienced yourself. And therefore, it's not anything that I'm going to sit here and I'm going to actually weigh any value to or listen to. I'm, I'm sorry. It's, this is how I feel when it comes to people giving out advice about certain situations. Because I can't speak to things about what happened with women. I just can't. I can't tell a woman how she's supposed to deal with pain when her cycle comes around. I can't tell a woman how she's supposed to deal with postpartum depression if she, when she's had a kid. I can't tell her any of those things because I'm not a woman and I don't, I don't know what those things feel like. I can't tell her when, I mean, it, it's certain things, that, and like just like I can't stand when women try to tell a man how he's supposed to feel or, and or like nowadays, like if a guy is expressing his feelings that he's being treated as being weak or soft. And it's like, come on now. It's like, but anyway, so, Yes, I'm I'm 100 with him on that one. He made some mistakes. He gonna own it up to him. But to prevent other people from going through it, he's telling them what not to do and using himself as an example of what not to do. How much do you have to me, go through? Let, let me finish because what you're doing, you're playing judge here, and you can't play judge. I, you have to be open minded that whew. people's lives are not always planned or strategized the way other people think their lives should be. Understand. Your life because I said it in there. I feel bad that I've done that uh, because I wish I could have been the traditional. Let me oh, finish. let me finish. Traditional. Let me, let me finish my story. Sorry, you. you take forever. Yeah, but I like to talk. I- and this is the problem I have with her. Shut the hell up and let the man finish. Like that's my thing with her. It's like she keep just because this man talks slow, and I, I've, inter- I've interacted with people like that before because, and I think you should talk slow in certain situations or conversations because. You want to be clear about what you're saying and you want the person to understand clearly what you're saying without following up asking you to repeat what you just said because you were talking too fast. So in his instance, 
I think that's a gift. I talk, I talk pretty fast. And so when I talk fast, people do ask me, can I repeat what I just said? And I'm just like, so in his instance, yeah, you might want him to get through his point, but let the man talk. Let him talk and let him get it out of his system. And no matter how slow he's talking, let him get it out of his system. You yeah. take forever. Yeah, but I like to talk I've slow. I've been telling this man, his, okay. he you talks like inter- elevator music. You still interrupted me. 2X. And I, and the, I, ha- and I, have, I have a, if you keep interrupting me, I can't get my message across. My point that I'm making is. You, and I promise you, she's probably still single. You, you go through life, you deal with certain things. And what makes a man a man to me is you accept the things you've done. But if you could teach people not to make the same choices that you made, not mistakes, choices that you made, mm-hmm. I don't want to be in that same position that TK was talking about, and this is what I'm going to do so I don't end up in that same situation. My point that I'm mm-hmm. making, any man, if you can learn from my situation, find one woman if you can, and stick with Which, I mean, every, I mean, that's the ideal thing, but... And that's what he's trying to teach people. Find that one woman to spend your life with and have those kids by and not have it spread out across multiple women. Now, I understand situations may not work out with between you and that first partner and y'all end up uh, getting a divorce or separating or whatnot, and then you go to somebody else. Now, in saying that, though, I don't think that should happen multiple times, like more, like more than two or three times. I don't, I, don't, I don't think that should happen more than two or three times. If you had kids by one person and then you get in, and that relationship doesn't work out, and then you go to another relationship and you have kids by that person. After that point, I think it should just stop. I don't think it's fair towards the kids. I think it should just stop from there and the guy should get a vasectomy. 100% guy should get a vasectomy. Because, I, I mean, yeah, I, I think the guy should get a vasectomy because I don't think that it's fair towards those children and it's not really fair towards um you got to think about the kids, the mothers. I mean, I, I really, I, I do not, I do not think that's fair because now they need help too. I mean, at the end of the day, they need help too. And, and, and even if you take the mothers out of, which I'm gonna take the mothers out of it, you got to be there for those kids. Like you really got to be there for those kids. And I think it's kind of hard to balance yourself out between so many children, even if they're in the same household, I still think it's hard to give 100% to every single child. You got to break that up to where they can see you 100% of the time if they're, you're in the same household. But when it comes to being present, like at events and things of that nature, it's somebody's, I, I just, I, I'm always thinking somebody's going to miss out. That's in one household. But when you break that up to between multiple households is, is damn near impossible, especially when you do it across multiple states. And I know about the multiple states thing. My kids, I raised my kids three states away from me. That one I just and, and love me- how it's usually the the men that can't keep it in their pants, the man that don't value a woman, the man that can't be in a relationship, mm-hmm. the one that goes and tells us, go Both. find one woman. You know who I'm going to take that advice from? But, from the man that has had the one woman. That's from the man true. that knows how to value a woman. That's not that true. has with their actions that's on a true. daily basis shown how they value women. Gonna, that's who I want to take the advice I'm from. Gonna tell not you, the one who's still walking I'm, around state to state I'm putting gonna, their thing into anything. I'm, I'm going I'm to still tell you why that's wrong. Saying is there are so many women in that situation in life. There is no right path. There is no, you should do it this way. People no. do things, things happen. But when do you People take that, accountability for not fixing your mistakes? And How again, much are you paying child support? So that's the thing too. It's like, she said in one breath, he said that he, he's going through his lessons. He's teaching, he's teaching the people not to go into the same path that he went into. And that's, and that's why. Now she's saying that the only way she can receive advice from somebody is if they they stayed in that one relationship, it didn't work out. So I'm like, well, isn't that the same thing? Isn't that kind of the same thing of what he said previously? He's telling people not to do what he's doing because he's giving them advice based upon how he lived. She's saying that she wants to receive information. The only way she can receive information is from somebody in how the life that they live. It is the same thing. So I was like, you're kind of being a little hypocritical here because you can't say, well, people shouldn't be listening to you because you're still, you were still running the streets. But I want to hear life lessons from a guy or a woman that was in a uh, monogamous relationship and it just didn't work out. And now they're having to go to somebody else because something happened. 
I'm like, it's all this life experiences or life experiences. And if you've lived a ton of life, had a ton of life experiences and you can give value to prevent somebody from going on a path that might, that you regret and that you went down and that you think it could have been better. Had you played stuff out differently, learn from that person, learn from that person. You can't count anybody out because life experiences are life experiences. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna play nothing in child support. Child support. Ooh, like I'm a good like, dad. I'm a good dad. Hold, on, Hold on, but you travel, but you travel all the time. Yeah, but I'm still a good dad. But, but you don't pay child support. Why would I pay child support? So you take them to school, take school, school every day. You take them to the doctor's offices. You take them to practice. I mess with women that got themselves together. Okay. And 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 yeah, but yeah, but you know what it takes physically. I would rather today, right today, today. I'm doing it alone. I'm doing it alone. Yes, and it's hard. But you don't have no help. No help. My kids, My kids, I help their mothers. They mothers. That's their mother. How do you help them? If she's not with anybody, I feel bad for anybody that sees this and try to get with her. But if she's with somebody, I feel bad for the dude that's even with her. Because if she's acting like that to a guest that's on her show, imagine how she's acting to the person that's in her life. They're growing up and they have to do like that. Those first five years of their lives. Yes. How often could you have possibly been? That's there? true. But so, what's Were you your, paying child support? Then? So, what's your, I don't pay child support. Okay, we're gonna move on. <laughs> we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on. Like, why would I pay child support? I'm not a bum. So here's the difference in what he what he's saying, and I don't think she understands either what what he's getting ready to say. Huh? Did you pay for their school? Of course. Okay, so by but you talk but you talk so fast you don't let people get their thoughts out. You just kept saying I don't pay you, child you, support. You you you're a judge. You, you, no, 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 no. You kept saying I don't. You pay child put support. people on the. Okay, so no, all these when I say I pay, pay, no, no. Let's make sure we're clear. It's very important because I got my friend, my so fans. Child support, let me thinking, let what? me finish my thought, darling. Oh, two X. Thank you. Boop. Yeah, make sure. When I say don't pay, you say, that's the, the communication gap. Okay. When you saying. What do I pay? You're thinking child support. I'm not giving anything. I'm saying I take care of my baby. So he, she's thinking that, and I, I get the, the the term or the word itself. So she's saying that he's not paying child support, meaning like court order child support. Because he's saying I'm not paying child support. But it doesn't mean when he's saying he's not paying child support, he's not taking care of his children. He's looking at it differently. He don't like, I guess he don't like calling it that, that, that term, child support. I, I call, well... Did I call it child support? I didn't necessarily call it child support payment. I don't think I called it child support payments either because I wouldn't, my stuff wouldn't court order either. Babies. Okay, what does that look like? Yeah, it looks like you take care of your Can you explain to me what it looks like yeah, for you to have to take care of the kids? school, clothes, trips, et cetera. Okay, um, what about they live in the house with their mom 24-7, yes. right? Yes. They live in their home. So do you right. pay any of those bills in their house? Yes, I did. They you grown did. now. Uh, we're we're going to focus Yeah, when they was down. when they were kids, yes. So the 16 year old not right now. So you yes. have to have one that's under yes. age. Yes, and what? well taken care. Of. What does that look like? School? Yeah, pay he for goes it? To school. Yeah, I don't I don't take him to car? school. No, he's 16. No. So who drives him to school? His mom. So you pay for the gas? No. Do you pay for her car insurance? No. Do you pay for her car bill? No. Do you pay for her light bill? No. Do you give her money for food? Of course. How much? Whatever she needs. So every month you don't I don't, I don't so why is it that she's sitting here? So she she's thinking that because the man had a child by this woman, he's not present, that he got to pay all the woman's bill on top of taking care of the kids on, on as well, too. It's like that's asinine. That's, I mean, that's really asinine itself because she wants now she wants to get all of the guy's money. And I mean, I didn't do that. I didn't do that at all. So it's like even in my situation, the, my kids' parents, my kids' mom and I, we didn't get, we didn't work out, so we ended up separating. And she moved three states away to be back with her close to her family, and I stayed, you know, down where I'm at here in uh, in Georgia. But now I know it's hard taking care of a kid by yourself. I mean, I get that. I mean, I, I understand it one percent, one hundred percent. What is the number? It's like 23 percent of U.S. females head families uh, reported receiving. Uh, any amount of child support. So with and then it decreased now to twenty six percent between twenty eighteen and twenty twenty. So it's like a lot of women aren't even getting child support payments. But and those but that's a court ordered child support payment. So and I say that number because when I my kids mom and I we separated. I didn't we didn't go to the court. I didn't want to go to, I, don't, I didn't want I'm I'm a responsible father. And of course you could say I'm a one off but I'm a responsible father. I don't need anybody telling me to take care of my children. I don't. I don't need that. A lot of guys can say that, but they're not giving anything. I really, I gave up whatever percentage was for the paycheck. I gave up that percentage for my paycheck. I need the court to tell me that, and then I increased it on my own. But then I, I paid that money on top of paying for extracurricular stuff. So 
I gave the the baseline, whatever, you know, child support payment where I sent money to take care of my, my boys. And then I paid for extracurricular stuff with their sports. They, they, so we had three things in the household. They had to play sports. They had to play an instrument. And, of course, they had to have straight A's in school. And if they did straight A's in school or A and B's in school, then they would get rewarded for doing good grades, too. But both of my kids were honor students. Both of them was in IB classes, international baccalaureate classes. And you got to you gotta test to get into those classes. So and they, all, they was in advance and in IB classes. So my thing was I paid for their sports, their extracurricular stuff. They played soccer. They played ran track. I played for all those things on top of playing for instruments. So one played, they both started off with viola. One switched over to violin. The other one switched over to French, to French horn. I paid for all of those things. And then um, I, I rewarded them for doing exceptionally well in school. So I would buy them gifts. I paid for all of their electronics. None of these things were included within the baseline so-called child support. None of those things were included in there. So whenever they need technology stuff, so they had iPads. I gave them iPads to help with studying. They had my, my oldest son. He played video games. He, well, he still played video games, but he played games. But he needed a better computer. So I bought, I hit, bought him this stuff, and I taught him how to build a because I'm an engineer. So I taught him how to build a computer from scratch. And so he's built, like, before he graduated high school, he built two computers, paid for it to get done. We built one together, and the second one he built on his own. So paid for all of that stuff, too. So I took care of those. And then as I got increased, I gave her increase because I know it is hard work when you're there by yourself. I understand that. When they get sick, you're there by yourself. Now, fortunately, if if my um my kids' parents, my kids' mom was still down here with me, then I would have picked them up. But but her going three states away, I couldn't I couldn't be there to help her out. Which is why I made sure that I did what I was supposed to do. So I don't mean, and but I wasn't paying for her gas. I I definitely wasn't paying for her gas, and I wasn't paying for no utility bills. Now whatever was left over. Of course, she could take that money to pay towards her bills and stuff in the house because I understand that you had to be there. But for, but I because I wasn't a guy to say, well, it better go towards my kids or else. No, I mean I get it. You know, you uh, you got to have power. You got to have food in the house because if you if you're unhappy and you're struggling, over, and then, you know the kids gonna end up be hurting too. But now when it comes to raising kids, my, like I just told you, my kids were three states away. I talk to my children every single morning, almost every morning until they graduated. We went through homework, made sure they had their homework with them. We went through affirmations. We went through, we did a prayer every single morning. We prayed every single day, walking to that bus stop. Before they got on that bus, we prayed every single morning. They would have a good day. I made them speak over themselves. And then if they were behind on, on the assignments, because like I said, my kids aren't perfect. If they were behind on the assignments, I made sure I told them about accountability <laughs> and what they meant if they didn't have their stuff together by the end of the day and make sure they turned their assignments in on time. And if they didn't, what those repercussions would be three states away. And therefore, I was still participating in the growth of my children. Both of my children graduated with honors. Both of them went into the college they wanted to get into without any problems. My both of my boys had won um, awards and stuff throughout school. One of my youngest, my son, my youngest son is an artist, so he got awards throughout the state while he was in school. So both of them had done exceptionally well, and both of them got into the school that they want to get into without having any issues whatsoever. And I did all of those things three states away. I picked my kids up during the summer to make sure I could spend. I spent time with them when they came down here for the summer. I didn't do any dating. I didn't have nobody got my attention outside of my boys when my kids was physically present in my life, like right, right here down here with me. And so I made sure that my kids knew that, that even though their mom and I wasn't together, they were still loved and they had everything they could get from their father. And that because I wasn't there, I'm not away with father. I was not going to abandon them. And I wanted to make sure that they had everything they have. And there are other fathers out there who are just like me. And I am proud for everything that my kids have gotten and how far they've come. And again, I'm not sitting here saying my boys are perfect, but I never had any issues out of my boys throughout school. I never had any disciplinary issues with my boys. My boys always did what they were supposed to do. And because we always I always taught them life lessons along the way that every action has a reaction. And it's up to you to determine what the action might be and what the reaction to that reaction could potentially be. It could be something good, depending on what you're doing, and it could be something bad based upon what you're doing. It's up to you to determine what you're going to do and what the reaction to what you're doing is going to be. And that's a life lesson I taught them, and I still preach it sometimes <laughs> to this day, but they're grown now. Then I mean, they're not grown, grown, but they're, they're old enough to know that I instilled it into their lives from what, the age of four that we weren't together all the way up until they were 18. So 
And I didn't have to sit here and uh, take care of all their mom's bills. I just make sure that my kids were taken care of. And then once they graduated, so this other thing too, like once they graduated, the money that I was sending up there for them, it has now shifted over into their bank account. She manages their bank account because well, they're in college. And I send the money directly to her and it goes directly into them. One goes towards my son's, uh, his car note and car insurance. And the other one goes into the other kid's bank account. Like he don't have a car. He's, I mean, he's down here with me in Georgia, but he don't, it goes into his bank account. He's just stacking his money up. So I, again, it's, you can't, that's why I'm like, I hate when people have this finite thing of like what men are. I'm like, no, not all men are like that. I'm like, I love my boys. I made sure that my kids would say, I had kids because I want to have kids. I made sure they were taken care of. And I still make sure they're taken care of. I do. I, and I'm like, and it didn't mean I had to sit there and take care of this spoiled their mom and we were separated, but I make sure that my boys were taken care of. And I made sure that no, no harm or nothing came to their mother because I do have a, I do have a, a strong thing about this. And I told my, my spouse that too. I'm like, I have to make sure that she's okay. Cause if she's not okay, then something could potentially happen like mentally to my boys. And I can't allow that to happen because we don't need any more sorry men here in this world or sorry children in general in this world. We got enough grown people that's terrible. We don't need any more coming up from the generation above. So I need to make sure that she's okay and she's mature. Mom, she's exceptionally smart. So she's, she, she's okay to where that she's not putting herself in a situation that would cause harm upon her to where it would affect our children. It didn't happen. We two responsible adults and it just didn't happen. You're thinking, I need X, Y, and Z. But there are some women on this planet who move a certain way. And when they need something, because if you got your stuff together... Um, so how so about you get your stuff together some too? Some women will say, baby, I need this, and it's done. Baby, not, you're not, you are my baby's daddy. No, 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 no. We made a mistake, there right? You, remember? There, there you go again. With the energy and your toxic energy, I don't matter. And, and and the, and the way I matter let me finish. And your energy influences negativity. You're not. No. You don't stay calm. Listen to what I'm saying. Okay, go ahead. I'm I'm giving you my point. When you do all that, and in, in, in the tone of your voice creates that type of energy. Okay, I'll speak so softly. what I'm saying to you is, there's people on this planet that just totally move a different way. You're not child support you're not a judge mm -hmm. all not you can do is say what you would like for your life mm -mm. you can't say what's good for somebody else's life because everybody moves there is not one mother find me one mother mm -hmm. in this world i don't care what language they are what country they're okay. from one mother uh -huh. that is okay with raising time-wise mm -hmm. i'm listening and financially mm -hmm. their child with the dad saying yeah i, I know a couple five of, of them no. i mean you can't even say you can't say that that you know you know all when you ain't one woman in this world that would be okay with that i don't agree with that but you can't say that you know that you know a woman would would be okay with that i mean you don't know that just like i don't know how i don't know every man i you know i'm not gonna sit here and say there ain't no guy that won't do x y and z because i there <laughs> there are some people out there that you know are very questionable about how they move in life. So I'm not gonna sit here and say that all guys would not do this. Certain things I can be definitely about, but I'm not gonna give the uh 100 percent that they would X, Y, and Z would only do this right here. No, i and you can't say that about most women. I mean, you just can't. Now I will agree to the fact that nobody, no woman wants to do or raise a kid by herself. I agree with that 100 percent I don't care if she's talking about from a partner standpoint and or family standpoint. No woman, I, I believe this. I don't think any woman wants to raise a child by herself. I think children should be raised by you know, the community. I really do. I think it should be a community thing that, you know, family members, everybody should be helping to take care of, of children. I mean, that's how we all grew. That's how I grew up. You know, we had neighborhoods. I let everybody watch out for one another. So if, if I was, if all of us are doing something wrong, running the streets, then the neighbors and everybody up the street would come out and get on us. And then they would tell it back to my grandmother and my parents. And we, we would get hit three ways. We would get hit three ways. So to say that definite thing, I don't agree with that 100%, but I will say to her point, to a degree, no woman wants to do it alone. I don't believe no woman wants to do it alone. Thank y'all for tuning in this episode. Man, matter of fact, y'all leave your opinion down below. Let me know, you know, how y'all feel about, feel about this endless, on this discussion. And we can talk about it more in the, in the comments. And like I say, I know this is like different than what I traditionally do on the channel itself. But I mean, politics and stuff and moving in relationships is all about politics and how you manage stuff in life. So 
Thank y'all for tuning in again. Make sure y'all hit the like and that subscribe button. Go check out some of my previous episodes. And then make sure y'all tune in for some of my streams. I stream on Mondays and Wednesdays between 7 and 8 o'clock at night. I'm trying to get TikTok in there now. But guaranteed, I'm streaming on YouTube and Twitch every Monday and Wednesday between 7 and 8 p.m. So, hope y'all are being safe out there. Love you all. Matrix. Peace, peace, peace.